Sometimes we wonder why God has included the good and the bad. We would like it just to be all the good, but there's a positive reason why God has included the struggles of these characters of the Bible, and that's because you and I will recognize that these are the struggles of the Christian faith. Today's a hundred day of 107, and we're reading from 1 Samuel 25 through 27. Samuel, the great prophet, has died. Now there's this tremendous void in the nation because he has been this judge and national prophet, and uh, it, there is this gapping hole uh, as this man of God is no longer there. Saul acknowledges that David indeed is going to be the next king. He realized this is what he feels so threatened by. A woman meets David uh, to restrain his anger because Nabal, a harsh and an evil man, uh, has restricted David from being able to cross into that territory at which he is seeking help. He seeks mercy and he seeks help and aid from Nabal and Nabal declines and he refuses. This enrages David, and he intends to retaliate and take action against him. Uh, Abigail intercedes and begs for mercy. That's uh, his wife being, and she brings peace offerings and pleads for David's uh, mercy. And amazing, this is an amazing intervention by Abigail. She humbles herself. She even assumes and takes blame, and she pleads for mercy. But an interesting aspect is that she actually prophesies. Now, is this so encouraging to see the number of people that God speaks his word through? In fact, in the New Testament, the aspect of prophecy uh, Paul speaks about the fact that, uh, you know, that we ought to prophesy and how often we may not even be aware of it, that we are speaking the oracles of God. So she uh, speaks and makes mention, in fact, makes mention of the reputation of David in his defeat of Goliath and, uh, and especially about his sling. So the reputation of David is spreading far and wide. David heeds the request of this woman. She appeases David and uh, acknowledges uh, that God is with her. David sees this and he restrains himself from uh, striking and attacking uh, Nabal and the community. But God, interesting enough, intervenes, strikes Nabal, and justice prevails. All of this tells us that when we wish to take uh, and intervene and take uh, and, and take responsibility for things that God so often wishes and wait, desires for us to wait for he's anxious to move on our behalf. David goes back to Ziph. Uh, the locals begin to tattle uh, on David to Saul. It causes and creates more problems. The uh, previous cave encounter with uh, Saul has now long been forgotten. Saul is, uh, he keeps hunting after David. Uh, this is the result of an evil spirit that begins to uh, arouse him uh, to his anger. It demonstrates the danger of somebody, and it all reminds us something, that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against what? The principalities, powers, uh, spiritual forces of wickedness in high places. And these forces of darkness have taken over King Saul. So David finds Saul and an entire army sleeping. And this is no ordinary sleep. Um, this is God intervening. God is with David, even when he's struggling with the, you know, where's, where's God? And he questions, you know, uh, the support of God. These are trained men to the king and they risk their lives by not defending their king, but they're all sleeping. And David and one other uh, Abishia, we see here, uh, walk right down in the midst of the army and stand right over Saul. David takes a spear and a jug, and uh, Abishai assume uh, God has given uh, Saul, King Saul, over to David and says, hey, strike him. This is your opportunity. God is in this. And, um, and so, and he asked David, can I strike him down? And, uh, and it could be such a quick, simple fix, wouldn't it? I mean, it seems like, right, like that, David could assume the throne uh, and all of David's problems would be over. But David refuses to do God's job for him and to prematurely get ahead of God. He will not uh, get ahead of God's timing. Uh, he won't touch God's anointed because this is still the office that Saul's to assume. And he takes the spear and he takes the water bottle from Saul's head 
And uh, listen, Abner uh, awakens the next morning, the defender of uh, David, or of Saul, excuse me, demonstrating to the king what David could have done. And he hollers from the other side and show how uh, David is determined to trust in God. And uh, Saul gets it and, and he blessed David and he once again reaffirms, hey, listen, uh, you're, you're indeed going to be the next, uh, next uh, king of Israel. Now listen, uh, it, it, but like us, uh, David is human. Uh, fears, uh, mental battles begin to creep in on him. It causes David to wonder if Saul will actually eventually get him. He goes to King uh, Achish and he pleads uh, asylum. He goes to the Philistines and once again reminding us of the race of faith that we all have. We are not alone. David represents all of our battles and struggles, but because he'll persistently, consistently wait upon God, he will be reestablished re re in the faith and his confidence will be once again fixed upon God.